Hey babes, I'm back with another YouTube video and today I'm doing another Valentine's Day set and I'm also going to go over how I prevent lifting. So we did just do a soak off on her nails and I actually decided to stop using cuticle pushers. So instead of using the cuticle pusher first, I'm using my circular cuticle bit to remove all of the dead skin from her cuticle area. When using this cuticle bit, I am holding it flat to the nail. If you start angling it up, you're not going to remove any of the dead skin, so remember that you want to have this nail bit flat to your client's natural nail. After doing this, I did remove the shine off of my client's fingernails using a fine gray sanding band. I'm not too sure where that part of the footage went, but like I said, I just went over my client's natural nails with my fine sanding band. Using my 100 grit hand file, I'm blending the natural nail in with the nail tip and I'm also going to straighten out the bottom. Now these are my non-C-curve nail tips and I will be restocking soon. I'm currently waiting for the shipment. I actually do not shape the sidewalls of these nails because like I said, they are pre-shaped so you don't got to do too much. Now when it comes to prepping the natural nails, I like to first use my dehydrator, just one coat. After that, I'll be using my Young Nails Protein Bond, one coat. And lastly, I'll be using my No Lift Primer and I do it in these directions every single time, same order. getting into this application once again i am using valentino's perfect nude yeah i did suggest other ones so i will be using other cover colors soon but for now my clients is loving this color so before i started to apply my colored acrylic i did add one bead of clear acrylic onto the natural nail and this also helps with lifting and it protects your prepped nail for my first bead i'm picking up a large bead and this bead will be covering the bottom of the nail pretty much the entire nail tip before you start to pull your acrylic down, you do want to make sure that all of the acrylic is on top of the nail so that when you're starting to evenly bring this down, it's coming down very smooth. So you guys can see I'm gradually going around the nail as I'm bringing my acrylic down so that one side isn't coming down way further than the other. Now for my second bead, I'm placing this bead slightly above the previous one. And before I start to blend this down, you do want to make sure that the top of the bead is flat with the nail first. So I'm just applying pressure to the top of the bead to get it flat. And then right after, I'm going to blend the bottom of the bead down and gradually make my way up. If when you place this bead down, you immediately start to bring the entire thing down, the nail may end up being flat. So that's why I like to start at the bottom allowing it some time to set and then gradually making my way up the nail to make sure everything is even. Now for the cuticle bead, I did place it slightly away from the cuticle area and then using the tip of my brush, I'm gonna slightly start to push this upwards before blending down. Now if I need to add more acrylic to the apex area, I will. But sometimes I like to continue to use the colored acrylic and sometimes I use clear. It really just depends on how I'm feeling. 
Here I did end up adding one more bead of my nude acrylic to create a higher apex and after doing this I blended it with the top of the nail and then after that I just allowed it to sit for a little bit before I started to blend the bottom of the bead down just like before and gradually making my way up. For this next nail, I'll be doing the same thing and I did want to let you guys know that when I'm doing nails, the only time I'm really patting the acrylic is if I need it to start the set more or I'm pushing it back into place. After all that acrylic is on top of the nail, the only thing I'm doing is pulling it down evenly. And I'm saying this because I noticed when I have nail classes, a lot of people be trying to pat it down the nail. I'm pretty sure you guys probably seen somebody do that before. But me personally, I feel like if I'm padding all around it, that it's just starting to set a little too quickly, at least with how I do nails. So right after everything's on top, just start to bring it down. Like, y'all don't got to pat all around it. But if that works for you, that's nice too. But this is just how I do nails. Once again, after placing my second bead, I am going to make sure that the top of the bead is flat first before I start to blend this down. You guys see how smooth it is? Like it comes out super smooth each time. I don't really have to do too much filing after application. So this is why I like to make sure that the top of the bead is flat first so that, you know, when I'm applying my next bead, I don't have to worry about any acrylic having to force itself over a bump. For this nail, I did end up using clear to build my apex a little higher, and there was really no reason why I did this. Like I said earlier, sometimes I just go back and forth. Also, since everybody is here, I wanted to know if I have any followers from California because I'm kind of planning on taking a trip out there again. Wait, I'm saying out there again like I've been there. I plan on taking another trip somewhere for about a week. Like when I went to Houston back in August, I wanted to do that again. But this time, maybe do like a little nail tuck meet and greet. And I did also want to take some clients while I was out there. So I would love to know if anybody is in California.
When doing the cuticle application, I do recommend that you dry out the bead just a little bit so that when you're applying this, it does not spill because once that acrylic touches your client's skin, that nail is definitely going to lift. So you have to make sure that you go back and clean it up using the tip of your brush so that you don't have any lifting due to the product touching your client's skin. Next, I'm using my 5-in-1 drill bit to seal my client's cuticle area and when I'm doing this, I'm going from right to left. And because this is a safety bit, I don't really have to worry too much about cutting my client's skin around the nail. Since my application is pretty smooth, I don't really use my drill on the rest of the nail besides the cuticle area. I'll probably get a little more into that because it may be faster, but I do prefer to use my hand file. Using my hand file, I'm now filing the side walls of these nails and I'm also going to be filing on top of the nail and I pretty much file on top of the nail until the bottom of the nail is completely white not necessarily the cuticle area because i already filed up there but until the bottom of the nail is all scratched up on because if there's no scratches in the area that means it's a little dip there so you can always go back and file some more Of course, now that we scratched up the entire surface of the nail, I do want to go ahead and make sure this is nice and smooth. So here, I'm using my buffing <laughs> I'm using my buffing block to remove all of the scratches off of the nail. So I did go ahead and clean these nails and I also painted them with my matte top coat. Here I'm creating my hand paint to French tip. So I'm first going to start off with a very wide V, if that makes sense to you guys. And then I'm going to create a straight line going across the bottom so that it will be way easier for me to create the perfect French tip. After doing this, I'll be connecting the lines on the side with the bottom line by creating a curved line. I hope this makes sense to y'all. Like, I didn't think it was going to be this hard to explain this part. Now that that's all finished, I'm using my gel polish to fill in the rest of the negative space. I did apply two coats of my gel polish when I was doing my French tip. Now with some polish, you don't need to do two coats of polish, but here I'm using D&D and I just felt like it definitely needed another coat. 
Also, I did want to thank everybody for the birthday wishes. My birthday is the 8th of February, which is actually this upcoming Tuesday. And like I said, I deeply appreciate it. Somebody even got me like some toe separators, a size like 16 acrylic brush. It was some cute things in my gifts like at my party. And I was really, really happy about that. Like, y'all knows me, I'm the nail tech. So I definitely love like the nail gifts. Amazing, amazing. Using some more of my DD gel polish, I did already go ahead and draw my little tiny hearts using my dotting tool. It's definitely way easier using a dotting tool. But now I'm using some of my black gel polish to create an outline on these hearts. So when you're doing this, you do want to make sure that you're using a very thin brush because you don't want these lines around the hearts to be too thick. I did also want these hearts to look 3D, so I will be creating another line that's inside of the heart to give it that effect. So I did go ahead and cure that and now I'm using some of my red gel polish to create very very small words inside of the hearts and I should have made the hearts bigger I'm not gonna lie I really should have made the hearts a little bigger because it was extremely hard for me to make these little tiny words. My client did also want some tiny little stars on her nails as well between the hearts. And we were going to do some clouds on top of the French tip. But y'all, this set had already took a while on top of the soak off. So I was a little tired.
so y'all this is all that i have for today's youtube video i deeply appreciate all of the birthday wishes i really do so if you guys did enjoy this video please be sure to like comment and subscribe and coming up i do have like my birthday nails and my birthday toes and everything i did for my birthday i did want to share with you guys so stay tuned